Hi everybody and welcome to another Tokenomics 101 diagram walkthrough, this time on Convex Finance. If you're interested in reading the full article, you'll be able to find it in the description below. What is Convex then? Well, Convex is pretty much a protocol that uh, looks to solve two main pain points of Curve. The first being optimization in that it isn't sort of easy, it's not really a set and leave it strategy to sort of gain the max amount of yield on your assets in the Curve ecosystem. And the second being that in order to gain this max amount of yield uh, on your assets, you sort of have to buy uh, and lock up CRV for the max amount of time, which is four years. And obviously none of us like to have illiquid capital. So how does Comex solve this? Well, first of all, it allows um, LP token holders to deposit their CRV, uh, sorry, their curve LP tokens into Comex. Um, and subsequently, the other entry point is obviously the CRV holders, right? So somebody who is simply holding CRV, um, they can deposit their CRV into the COMIC protocol, uh, in return getting a one-for-one -one CVX CRV wrapper, um, which uh, obviously holds the same value. Now, what does COMIC do with this CRV that is uh, it has accumulated here? Well, it pretty much uh, max locks that in the Curve protocol and slowly starts to accumulate uh, VCRV. As it does this, uh, it pretty much starts to also accrue uh, CV CRV rewards. Okay, now some of the, those rewards are paid back to LP token holders. Okay, we'll see what other uh, what else goes on with these rewards later on. Subsequently, the uh, emission schedule for CVX is actually quite interesting because rather than being a function of time, it is related to the amount of CRV claimed by the liquidity pools uh, that Convex has on Curve. Okay, and as you can see, um, as the um, as they accumulate more CRV rewards, they're pretty much going to distribute uh, CVX to LP token holders. Another um, recipient of this distribution is the staked CVX CRV, uh, what users who are staked, uh, I should say. So I guess the logic here is that somebody pretty much deposits CRV, permanently deposits CRV into the protocol, in return gets CVX CRV, and then uh, they deposit that into uh, the staking contract to then attain um, CVX distribution. Okay, so I guess a form of yield. Now. The idea obviously is that pretty much that the uh, CRV holder wants to get a yield on their static assets, right? Uh, and this is how they go about it, staking CVX CRV. Uh, another reason why this is desirable is pretty much not simply because of the CVX distribution, but is, it is also to do with the fee share, okay? So coming back to this, where Comex slowly starts to accrue um, CRV rewards from the um, the LP positions that they that they hold that they hold, um, they distribute this to LP token holders and also take a 16% fee share from this and distribute it to uh, CVX CRV stakers uh, in the form of CRV and to be specific 10% paid in CRV, uh, and subsequently 5% of that goes to CVX stakers in the form of CVX CRV. So I guess the full uh, pipeline is somebody buys their CRV, their, their principal, they deposit that uh, into COMEX, they get CVX CRV, um, they stake that CVX CRV, which subsequently pays them a 10% uh, fee distribution uh, from all the pools on that COMEX owns um, in CRV, that's paid in CRV, and they also get a CVX distribution, which can subsequently be staked also to gain a 5% reward in CVX CRV, okay? Um, obviously, the LP token holders are happy too because they're being distributed max boost plus additional yield paid in CVX. Now, what happens uh, with the vote escrow uh, curve? Well, obviously, we all know the power that vote escrow uh, CRV has uh, in directing curve emissions. And obviously, wherever the emissions go, the liquidity goes. And liquidity is the name of the game especially for protocols looking to bribe, um, sorry, protocols looking to drive deep liquidity to their products. Um, such a case is Frax, for example. Um, and this vote, uh, vote escrow curve, uh, as I mentioned initially, cannot be taken out of the protocol. So uh, you can deposit CRV and you get your wrapper in return and you can then subsequently uh, sell this, okay? Uh, this is obviously a liquid wrapper, meaning that there's no lockup, uh, which is obviously solving one of the pain points um, that we talked about initially. 
but this uh, vote escrow curve permanently stays in COMEX, and obviously this is uh, the power. So what happens is that pretty much um, CVX stakers now, um, sorry, CVX holders now hold a an underlying amount uh, of CRV, okay, and, and subsequently um, vote escrow uh, CRV, so to speak, because of this relationship, okay, because of the relationship of the distribution model, right? So what happens is that protocols obviously want the power that this CVX holds, and they are willing to bribe uh, CVX uh, holders um, for this, okay? And the mechanism to sort of capture this value is the locking mechanism, so, and this is where the vote lock comes in, okay? So when a user, when a CVX holder locks their CVX, uh, it's pretty much called vote locked CVX, okay? And this automatically stakes uh, it for them, which means that they're going to get this 5% paid in CVX CRV also, and a subsequent 1% uh, fee paid in CVX CRV. And, uh, and additionally, they're going to get bribed by protocols looking to obviously um, direct or, or use their underlying voting power to sort of benefit themselves, right? So all in all, it is pretty uh, pretty interesting system. And this is what has sort of created uh, the yield bearing aspect of uh, CVX as an asset. So yeah, I, I would definitely um, suggest reading the uh, full article if you're interested and I hope you enjoyed everything. If you have any questions or insights, please drop by our Discord, Tokenomics DAO Discord, which you will also be able to find a link for in the description. And yeah, see you in the next one.